David and Lourdes Garrett wanted to transform a dilapidated townhouse into something nice. Most cities would appreciate such a development effort. But as it turns out, New Orleans bulldozed their dream right out of existence. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. The Garretts paid good money to buy the property from the city. But just four months later, they were treated like persona non grata. The good news is, they are being represented in court for free by the Pacific Legal Foundation. Attorney David Bremer of the Foundation is on the phone with us today to discuss the case. David, thanks for talking with us. Thank you for having me. Maybe you could start off by giving us some background. How did the Garretts become interested in the property, and how much did they invest? as you might imagine, because of, you know, hurricanes and redevelopment, the the city itself owns quite a lot of older properties that it's acquired through people who have abandoned and through tax sales and that kind of thing. And and the city's starting to try and get rid of those properties now. So the Garrett's are like a lot of Americans, and they were looking for some property that they could get at a good price and that they could um, fix up and turn over or sell to someone who wanted to redevelop. And they found a small parcel in New Orleans. Uh, kind of near freeway. It had an old townhome that had been neglected for um, the last 17 years. And in fact, it was owned by the city. The city had acquired it in the 90s after a tax sale because someone didn't pay their taxes. And it just sat there and rotted away. And and the Garrett's thought they could uh, fix it up and, and do something good and make some money. And so they bought it. How much did they invest to buy the property? In the range of 10 grand, somewhere in there. Did they have a chance to make any improvements? No, they didn't have a chance to do anything. The sale, this was in 2015, it was right around this time of year, actually, you know, before the holidays and all that, and they consummated the sale and recorded it, and and before they had a scene and the holidays came, and then in January came, and then the thing was torn down. They called the city and said, what are you doing? You just sold us this property with a clean title, and four days later, they got a a bill for the demolition. So they didn't uh, get any notification, but I understand the city tried to uh, notify some previous property owners from the 1990s? Keep in mind the timeline here. In 1998, the city acquired this property from a delinquent tax payer from the owner. So the city owned it since 98. Then for the next 17 years, it sat there and they ignored it. But during the last part of those 17 years, in 2000. 12, 2015, the city sent notices of code violations for the property to the prior owner. This was discovered later on. So the city is sending these notice saying there are some code violations on this property to someone who doesn't own the property, and we might take action against the property. But no one tells the Garretts this when they buy the property from the city itself, and then there you have it, so that the city tears it down, and then the Garretts complain and say, hey, we never had notice of this. You guys sold us this property, clean title. There's no defects. We recorded it. You can't just tear down our building, and then they sent them the bill for $11,000. Wow. Well, it sounds like the city's actions were at the least incompetent and at the most unethical. Either way, it was probably also illegal and unconstitutional. What's your take on this as a lawyer? You hit the nail on the head there at the end. In the end, it, it ultimately, it doesn't really matter whether a city is incompetent or foolish or just making bad decisions or going after you. It doesn't matter. When you own private property, the government must make reasonable efforts to give you notice before it takes your property. And then after that, when property is taken or destroyed, it has to pay compensation. So on the front end, it's got to give you notice. On the back end, it needs to compensate when it destroys private property. Where were the Garretts in the court process before Pacific Legal became involved? They filed a lawsuit in federal district court, which is a trial court, a federal trial court. And they lost that suit because the federal court said, well, you you need to go to the state courts first and see if the state courts will compensate you for this. Well, the problem with that is that New Orleans owes about 35 to $40 million in back judgments to people that have sued the city over the past two or three decades and won judgments against the city, and the city won't pay them. So that's why the Garrett's went to federal court, because the city won't pay out state court judgments, if that makes sense. Right. Garrett said, well, if we go to the state courts and we win, the state courts can't enforce the city to pay, and they haven't been paying anyone. So that's why we're here, and the court ignored that. And so now we're in the appellate court, the federal appeal.
Appeals Court in New Orleans, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, arguing initially, at least, that the Garretts need to have a fair day in court. Well, David, I'm glad you're able to help. What do you think you can do for them? Get them justice. You have a figure in mind what you think the city might be forced to pay? Oh, I don't have an exact figure, I know, but you are entitled. I can just tell you generally that when your constitutional rights, when you have property taken or destroyed and your constitutional rights are violated in that process, you have a right to all damages. And damages includes not just the fair market value of what was taken from you, but also out-of-pocket costs, lost profits, everything that is consequential to the government coming in and destroying your property without notice, it's liable to pay that. So we didn't get far enough along to, to figure out an exact number. But for a couple like the Garretts, you know, being out $20,000 or $30,000 is a lot of money for them. They're, they're not big developers. They're just regular Americans who thought they saw an opportunity and then had it yanked out from under them. I would hope that the next judge hearing this case will immediately see how ridiculous the city's actions are. And also, uh, anything else you'd like to share with us today? Thank you for the opportunity to be on with you. I would say that, unfortunately, these type of problems with the government are not that uncommon in America today. As you know, we have a highly regulated society with lots of bureaucracy, and these problems occur a lot. But at Pacific Legal Foundation, and you can go to our website and look at www.pacificlegal.org, we have a number of these cases that seem, how could this possibly happen, but they do. One of the reasons, unfortunately, is property rights are sort of considered a disfavored sort of individual right, not as important maybe, say, as free speech. Some people think, well, of course, that's not true, because if the government can take your property from you when it wants, you're certainly not going to speak up. So property rights are very important, but they're not highly protected this time when we're working to change that at Pacific Legal Foundation and the Garrett's and other cases. And each one of those cases would make a great movie for the week. David, I'd like to thank you for educating our audience about the case, and please let us know how things turn out for the Garrett's. I will, and thank you again for having me. David Bremer is an attorney with Pacific Legal Foundation. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. you hear this.com.